What if a typhoon hits Hanoi tonight? With winds so strong, it's already blowing roofs off the buildings around you. You have to evacuate any minute, and you can only grab a handful of things on the way out. What would you bring? I returned to Takloban City, four months after Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest typhoon to ever hit land, devastated the central regions of Philippines, destroying more than four million households and depriving thousands of lives. The study center that I had built with the community was gone. The waves caused by the typhoon had destroyed it, leaving nothing behind but traces of the foundation. A man approached me with a roll of paper in his hands, and he told me he had saved it from the typhoon, and he wanted me to have it. It was the blueprints of the study center. It was the only thing that he had saved when he and his wife and daughter escaped the waves caused by the typhoon. He could have taken anything, but he chose to take the blueprints. And he did that because he believed that the one thing that they'll need after the typhoon is come back together again, the same way that we built the study center. The situation for the community was already tough before the typhoon. The fathers struggling every day to get a job to put food on the table for their families. And apart from managing the household and taking care of their children, the mothers was also working in the market to make ends meet. Still, they could not afford breakfast or lunch, not to mention school expenses like books or uniforms for their kids. Imagine, imagine how it feels like to gradually see your children give up and drop out of school. Streetlight was a local NGO that was working to help these kids back to school. And I was invited to build a study center for this purpose. But to truly address why the children dropped out of school, we needed to involve their parents in the process to enable them to address the underlying issues and challenges that they were facing in their everyday life. We were no longer designing a building. We're now designing a process for us and the families to come together. At first, we asked the children to draw their dreams for the future. And later, we asked the parents to guess which drawing belongs to your child. But they couldn't. It's made a deep impression on the parents, but it also became a reason for them to come together to make an effort to support their children. But coming, coming together wasn't that easy. At first, the children did not want to speak up in front of their parents. And the wives were shy to speak in front of their husbands. So to enable everyone to come together, we needed to separate the family members into groups of mothers, fathers, and children to enable them to speak freely, to build their self-confidence, and to contribute to the project. But to be able to contribute, we needed to provide the time and the space for the parents to be able to engage. So we employed the fathers on the construction site, providing the security of a steady income. During weekly workshops with food and entertainment for the kids, the mothers got a break from their daily responsibilities and the possibility, the time and the space to think about the future. During these weekly gatherings, the children would visualize what they needed to realize their dreams, and the mothers would give shape to these needs through drawing and model making. The fathers would take these designs and these ideas and test it out in full scale on site before building the study center itself. The building was not just a building to, communi to the community. It was a symbol of their efforts for their children. And they had built it through a process that they later called Bayanihan. Bayanihan is a Filipino tradition of coming together to make a shared effort towards a common goal. And actually, I learned that we also have a very similar tradition in Norway 
that we call dugnad. But for Bainian or dugnad to exist, there needs to be a sense of community. And they had created this by coming together for the shared purpose of supporting their children. The building was their take on behind a bottle, a Filipino typology of heavy stones with a light timber structure on top. This light timber structure allows for natural ventilation to pass through the building, but it also allows strong winds to pass through without destroying the building. And this was a principle they used on their own houses. This allowed the study center to survive several star strong typhoons, but also a major earthquake. But on the 8th of November, 2013, Typhoon Haiyan created a storm surge that hit Takloban city. This is a video showing how the children, the parents and streetlight escaped the waves by climbing onto the nearby roof. This was filmed by my friend Alan, which runs Streetlight, founded it. The study center was destroyed. Many were traumatized by the waves, and they wanted to move off the coast. Permanent and temporary houses was being built in the northern relocation zone for families that had lost their houses. But the uneven distribution and the random relocation of families contributed to split communities apart. With no sense of belonging, the lack of livelihoods, and infrastructure, there was an increase in crimes and conflicts. It became important for us, now that we were also moving to the northern relocation zone, to not just think about what we were building back, but how we would build back. To deal with the trauma, the community identified two concepts that were important for them. That was the idea of the heavy and the light. The heavy represented a castle that the children had seen from the roof that had survived the waves and became a symbol of safety. The light represented the ventilated timber structure of the study center. It was a symbol of comfort. This be these two concepts became a common language for us to create and to build back what we'd lost. Through role play, the children envisioned what kind of activities the building needed. The mothers would take these activities and position them inside the heavy and the light volumes. We would test these heavy and the light volumes in full scale on site to understand how the sun works, how the climate works. <laughs> and we would eventually also look in models to understand the structure, the roof, the doors, the columns, the windows. It became important for us to change the focus away from the building as a product to the building as a series of qualities and activities. To design the doors and the windows, the children wrote poems. These poems illustrated what they meant a window is for them. Trying to identify what this meaning was, the fathers would look around the village for similar doors and windows already existing. They would document this and present it back to each other. They would make new designs in different materials and test it out on site before eventually getting it approved by their wives. The designing of the windows and the buildings themselves was a process of understanding not only what these objects are, but also what they do. It was trying to understand what does these objects mean to us? What resources and knowledge do we really have? And how can you use this to create something that, that matters? to everyone as a group. The office, the study center, the orphanage, the park was recently completed. It took us three years and a hundred workshops to design and build back what we lost. Remember the blueprint that the father had saved from the typhoon? When we opened it on the table in front of us, there was a strong sense of salt water, a smell filling the room. And we realized that all the drawings and illustrations, they had already washed away. But he told me it's not the blueprint itself that mattered. It's the meaning and the stories embedded in this blueprint that later enabled the community to come back together to deal with the trauma and build back what we lost. 
And I believe, and I, I learned this from this project, is that it's not so much what we do, it's also how we do it. So whatever profession you have, whatever you do, if you can come together with others, build on each other's differences, and create something that matters to all of you, you'll stand stronger whatever happens in the future. Thank you.